Today I'm going to teach you how to use the blocks that we call algae blocks to help you solve addition and subtraction equations. You may have seen these boxes of blocks in Ms. McCauley's room or Mrs. Bino's room and wondered what are those for? Or maybe even you've used them in past grades. We're going to use them as a means of solving addition and subtraction equations. They are always available to you in the classroom to help you solve equations. Some of you may find this very, very helpful because it's a very visual way to solve equations. Some of you may not need this, and that's okay too, but I want to be able to show you how to do this um, so that you have a resource to help you with solving equations. Solving equations is one of the most important concepts that you will learn this year in math. Go ahead and go to your next page. You should have this exact packet open in your own good notes so that you can be filling it out. Some of it I will fill out for you and you will write it down. And some I will ask you to pause and fill out yourself and that's what Mrs. Bino and I will check. The first thing that we're going to do is identify these blocks. You should also have a box of algebra blocks next to you while you complete this lesson. Some of you could also use um, good notes later um, as a means of solving equations with tiles. Some people call them algebra tiles, but we're going to use algebra blocks for this. So I'd like you to have a box of them while you listen to this lesson. The first thing we're going to do is identify these blocks. Okay, we need to get to know each block and what it stands for. Name each block by its dimensions and the area of its largest surface. Notice how the dimensions of the blocks are related to each other. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're not actually going to measure each block, but we're going to start with the green square, the little green square. I want you to take a look at it. We are going to say that it has a side length of one centimeter. Same with its width. So length and width are one centimeter. So we are going to write one for length and one times width. We should know that area is always length times width. Area of a square or rectangle, I should say. Okay, so area equals length times width. So that's going to help us. That's a big concept here. When we look at our dimensions, we see that the length the length is 1 and the width is 1. 1 times 1 is simply 1. So our green squares, we are going to call them 1's from now on. Those are our 1's. Okay, They represent the digit 1 or the number 1. Now go ahead and get your yellow rectangle out. Okay, Your re yellow re rectangle looks to me like a french fry. So I'm going to call it french fry. Okay, it's either french fry or yellow rectangle. You can call it whatever you like, but I remember it as french fry. Okay, actually I'm going to call, I don't know which is the right way to spell french fry. Sometimes I think it's, no, I think it's definitely the other way. What about you? See, even math teachers have to think about their spelling sometimes. Okay, french fry. Look at the dimensions of french fry. French fry has a width of one. See the surface area of it? The surface of it is matches the green cube. That's how we know it has a width of one. The length, we do not know. We're not going to get a ruler out and start to measure it. We're going to just say that we don't know what it is. And remember from one of our previous lessons that when we do not know what a number is or a quantity is in math, we use a variable to represent that unknown quantity. We're going to call it x. So now look at your area. We want to find the area of the french fry, length times width, so x times 1 is simply x. So from now on, french fry will be called x. So we will always use french fry to represent x. Now I'd like you to get out the yellow square. Okay, The yellow square has a length that matches french fry. Okay. Its width also matches French fry. So it is a length of x and a width of x. Well, to find the area, we have to do x times x. What is x times x? That would simply be x to the second power or x squared. So our yellow square will always now be called x squared. Now get out your orange rectangle. This one will be called Cheeto. I like to think of it as a Cheeto because it looks like a Cheeto. Okay, our Cheeto, once again, has a width, if you look at its surface area here at the top, it has a width of one unit, like the green cube. The length, we do not know what it is again. We're not going to measure it. We're just going to say that we don't know it. 
So we need to call it a variable name. We're going to call it y. So our area is simply 1 times y. I'm not going to use an x because that gets confusing. 1 times y. So that means our area is y. So from now on, Cheeto will be called y. Next is our orange square. This is very similar to the yellow square. It has a length of y and a width of y. When you multiply y times y, you get y squared. So our orange square will always be called y squared. The last piece that we're going to look at is the light orange rectangle. Now if you were to look at this and compare it to our other pieces that we have, it has a length that exactly matches the french fry and the width exactly matches the Cheeto. So if we have to times x times y or french fry times Cheeto, we would get x, y. So our light orange rectangle will now be called x, y. Okay, that is all we have to do to label our pieces. These are our algebra blocks. So from now on, if I ever say use x, you would know to pull out a yellow rectangle. Okay, go ahead and go to your next page. Okay, now we're going to learn how to read the blocks, okay? Like blocks can be grouped to represent greater numbers or expressions. Okay, that just means that we could take four of the same thing and call it four of that thing. So let's look at that. So if we look at this, what we have here is our x squared, okay? That is our yellow square. Okay, I'm going to write that up here. These are yellow squares. So you should get out four yellow squares right now to match what we have. Okay, each one represents x squared. If we count then the number of blocks that we have, we have one, two, three, four, we would read the number or expression, four of x squared. We can write that down as simply four x squared. That's what four yellow squares would represent. So you try it. Let's come down here and pull out five orange rectangles or Cheetos. Okay, what name will you use to name each rectangle? Okay, we have already decided that every single orange rectangle is going to be called Y. Okay, if we have five of the Y's, what would we call it? Okay, look at the previous example. If we have five Y's, hopefully you would say that our expression would read 5Y. That's what five orange blocks would look like. Let's practice. Here's what I want you to do in the next activity. Use algebra blocks to make your own expressions. Take a handful of like blocks and write the expression represented. Be sure all the blocks in a handful are the same. Okay, so let's do an example together. Let me pull this up a bit. Okay, so we're going to pull a, a handful. Okay, let's just say, I actually, I'll write down um, different group of blocks for the first one and you can write down the expression and then for the for the for numbers four five and six you can grab your own handful of like blocks and write an expression so in the first one I'm going to grab three yellow squares okay if I went back and looked up what a yellow square is yellow squares yellow squares are known as X squared, right? We know that from up above. If I have three of them, my expression would be 3x squared. Okay, so what I would like you to do in the next set of examples, and this is what I would like you to show us, is I would like you to grab a handful of green squares for number four, grab a handful of orange rectangles for number five, and a handful of light orange rectangles for number six. This you will show us, show us, okay? So we would like you to show those to us after the lesson. And then you can go ahead and go to the next page. Okay, now it says unlike blocks can also be grouped to represent greater numbers or expressions. In the previous page, we pulled 
groups of blocks that were the same. In this case, let's take an example. Here we have an example of an x right here. This is x and this is 1. Okay, this is x and this is 1. These are all 1s. Okay, so sort the blocks into groups. Okay, so we're going to put the x's together and the 1s together. Count the number in each group. Here we would have two x's and we have four ones. So we would then read the number. We would have two x plus four. Okay. Suppose that one orange square was included in the group of blocks in the example. What expression would then be represented? So if we had to add an orange square, remember an orange square Orange square is known as y square, y squared. Okay, so if we add a y squared to 2x plus 4, we would simply write 2x plus y squared plus 4. It's as simple as that. Let's go to number 2. Write the expression represented by the following algebra blocks. Think about the process you learned in the example. Describe how you determine the expression represented by the algebra blocks. I will help you by identifying them so that you can grab them. Grab them from the algebra blocks box so that you can actually see this physically. Okay, this one right here is going to be your orange square. Okay, or actually no, I am wrong. I can tell I'm wrong by looking at the size. This is your yellow square, or x squared. Okay, these are your x's. This is your y, or your cheeto, and these are your 1's. Okay, so take a look at that and see if you can decide what that is, if you had to write it down. Okay, take a minute, pause the video, put the blocks down, just like they're shown here, and see if you can then write an expression. Now that you're back, let's see if you wrote what I wrote. What we have here is we have 1x squared, so let's write x squared, plus we have 1, 2, 3x's, so 3x plus 1y plus 4. That's our expression represented by the blocks. Now I'd like you to practice. Use algebra blocks to make your own expressions. Take a random handful of blocks and write the expression represented. So let's just go, I'll do the first example for you. Let's say I grab a handful. Let's, I'll write it over here. My handful. Okay, I have, I grabbed one orange rectangle, three yellow rectangles and five greens. If I had to write that down, I will go ahead and write it in my boxes here. So I have five greens, three yellow rectangles, and one orange rectangle. It might also help you to write above the columns what these represent. Green square represents one, yellow rectangle is x, yellow square is x squared, Orange rectangle is y, orange square is y squared, and light orange rectangle is xy. Then simply count the number that you have in each column and write it over here. So my first one would be 5 plus 3x plus y. Okay, I would like you to do the next three and then show us when you're done. When you finish, then you may go to the next slide. Okay, the next part of this lab, or inquiry lab, is to take our algebra blocks and model numerical and variable algebraic expressions. So identify the correct block for each part of the expression. Model the expression, and then read it, record it. So for example, up here we have x squared, xy, and a 1. How we would model it would be we have 1, 2, 3 of them, so we have 3x squared, 1, 2, 3, 4xy, and 1 green. And so our expression is 3x squared plus 4xy plus 1. Okay? 
Let's try one. Which block would you use to model the expression 8y? How many blocks would you use? Hopefully you remember that y is the Cheeto, okay, or the orange rectangle. So we would say here that we would use the orange rectangle, and hopefully you know that we would use 8 of them because it says 8y. 8. The next question says, model the expression 3x plus 4y plus 3xy plus 5. Remember how the example was modeled. Describe how you decided which algebra blocks to use. This is one that I would like, well, I guess I'll do this one with you because there's a bunch of practice below. So in this case, I'm going to move over here and I'm going to write down each part so I know what to get out. 3x, 4y, 3xy, and 5. Okay, so 3x is three yellow rectangles. 4y is four orange rectangles or Cheetos. 3xy is three light orange squares or rectangles actually. three light orange rectangles, and five is just five greens. That's what it would look like. Okay, so that's how we would write it. I'm just going to put an arrow there. Okay, now I would like you to practice. Please model each expression below. You do not have to do all of them. Let's just simply do the evens. I'd like you to do four, six, eight, ten, and twelve. You can add another page and list which blocks go with each number, just like we did right here in this example. Okay, when you're finished, you will show that to your teachers. And then go to the next slide. Okay, here is a review sheet for you to practice on your own. Okay, I'm going to just write on your own. on your own practice. Please show this to us when we check your work. And then you may go to slide number seven. Okay, this is a piece of, um, or it's a, a sheet that goes with the blocks. If it's not with your blocks right now, please ask your teachers to get you an algebra block sentence mat. Hopefully you can see this sort of looks like a scale. It looks like a balance scale. And I'm actually going to write up here that it looks like a scale because we want to remember that these sides must balance or be equal. Okay. When we see an equal sign, that means that we are talking about equations. Okay. You'll also notice positives and negatives. Okay. You will put all negative numbers where it says negative. Okay, all positives go in the positive section. Okay, these are important concepts to remember. So if I were to put a green square down here, that would mean that it was negative. Okay, so for example, if I were to write, if I made a little square, let's see if I can switch to a green. Oh, good. Okay, so if I put a green square down here, I put like two green squares over here I'm just showing you what this looks like and then let's say I put okay, a yellow rectangle up here and then over here I'm going to put um, four over here, my actual equation would look like this. It would be x, because there's an x there, my, plus a negative 2 or simply minus 2, right? Because adding sand is the same as taking away gas. x plus a negative 2 equals positive 4. That's my actual expression that I have modeled here. We will come back to this scale and you will use it often. Go ahead to your next page. All right, an equation is a little like a balance scale, just like what I just said. The two sides of an equation must equal the same number. The scale on the sentences mat shows this equality. For example, model the equation x minus 3 equals negative 2 plus 7 
on the sentence mat. I want you to have one of the mats out right now so that you can do this. The left side of the equation matches the left side of the mat. So for example, x minus 3 goes on the left and negative 2 plus 7 will go on the right. Okay, it actually shows it over here for you. Okay, so you can see this is x right here. This is your minus 3. This over here is negative 2 and this is positive 7. Okay, so which algebra blocks are used in step 1? In step one, we modeled the left side, and on this we used an X, and we used three greens. What do the two sections on the sentence, two sections of the sentence match show? One side shows X minus three, and the other sh side shows negative two plus seven. The drawing in step two can be simplified by removing some zero pairs. Do you remember what zero pairs are from unit three? Zero pairs are a positive and a negative of the same quantity that will add it together equal zero. So for example, if you have a mat, and I'm gonna just draw it over here, okay, and you have your positive and your negative. If you have a green square here and a green square here, they cancel each other out because they are positive one and negative one, which makes zero. So for example, let's go over to this model and cross off. We have two negatives here, so we can take them off of both sides. So we are left with five after we take them off, okay? So we then have, so what we would have now is x minus three equals five because we took away two from both sides on that um, on the right side. Okay, let's go ahead and look down a little bit at number four and use algebra blocks to make each model. Then write the equation shown. So let's look at these models right here and you can model them the same on your map. This right here looks to be an x and this is two. Okay, this is a negative three. So our equation would be written as x plus two, that's your left side, equals negative three. There's nothing in the top quadrant on the, the right side. That's our equation. For number five, we simply have one positive, negative four here, and then over here we have a y and a 2. So our equation looks like 1 minus 4 equals y plus 2. We could simplify that 1 minus 4. Hopefully you remember how to do that. We can either use our zero pairs and cross out 2, which leaves us with a negative 3. Or we can do KFC. Remember, 1 plus a negative 4 equals negative 3 equals y plus two. Simplifying the equation makes it a little bit easier to solve. What I would like you to do now is to use your algebra blocks and sentences mat to model each equation. Record them by sketching, okay? Or you can actually take a picture of your sentence mat and put the screenshot right here. Let's do six, eight, and 10. These are your show me's. Show your teachers. Go ahead and go to your next slide when you have finished that activity. Okay, now we're gonna to get to the good stuff. We're actually going to solve equations, okay? We are gonna use your algebra blocks and the sentences mat to solve equations. The goal is to get the block for the variable all by itself on one side of the mat. So solve y minus two equals negative five. The first step is to model the equation. So you can see that we did that by this. This is y minus two, and this is your negative five, okay? The left side of the mat always matches the left side of the equation. The right side of the mat matches the right side of the equation, okay? Then we solve. 
The way we solve is we want to get y all by itself. We want to get rid of this negative 2. Okay, in order to get rid of negative 2, we need to make 0 pairs. Okay, in order to make a 0 pair with a negative 2, we need to, I'm going to write this on the side here, we want to make 0 pairs that's our additive inverse again. Make zero pairs to get the variable alone. Okay. You also must be fair. If you do something to one side, you must do it to the other. Okay. You must be fair to both sides. That's very, very important. Okay, so if we add 2 to this side, we must add 2 to this side. So then we would take these off because they cross themselves off, and then we can cross off these because they cross these themselves off, and we end up with y equals a negative 3 because we got rid of all of the zero pairs. Okay. Now, try this one. Model and solve the equation 5 equals x minus 3. Before you begin, think about your goal. What will the right side of the sentences mat look like when you're done? Let's try this together. I'll draw a mini mat right here. Okay, so we have 5 is our first side. I'm going to have 3, 4, 5 green cubes on the left side equals... We have x, that's going to be our x block right here, okay, x, minus 3, so we have 3 negatives. Okay, we need to get x all by himself. That means we need to get rid of these 3 negatives. If we have a negative 3, you should know that we need to add 3 to this side to get rid of it then we can cross it out and they are gone because of the property, the inverse property or the additive inverse. Whatever we do to one side, we must do to the other. So let's go ahead and add three to this side. Now we are left with x equals eight. Okay, and the other thing that you can always do to make sure that your answer is right, take your eight, plug it in, for x, substitute, remember? Substitute it in and see if that is correct. 8 minus 3 does in fact equal 5, so that is the correct answer. Okay, I want you to please solve the equations below in the practice section. Record your steps to complete the chart. What you are adding to each side is to make your zero pairs. Okay, and basically what number you add is the same as the number of zero pairs to be removed. So let's try the first one together. y minus 3 equals 6. So what we're going to add to each side is plus 3 because we want to get 3 off alone. So then we would be taking off 3 0 pairs. So y is going to equal 9. Okay. I would like you to do number 4 and number 6 and then show. Okay, and we have one more slide to go. You guys are doing a great job, and trust me when I say that this will really help you. The last step is to now use subtraction to solve equations. We used addition in the last examples. Now we're going to use subtraction. So sometimes you need to subtract from both sides of an equation to get the variable alone. Solve this equation, x plus 3 equals negative 1. The first thing you're going to do is model it with an x right here, and here's your 3, and then your negative 1. In order to solve, you need to get x alone. In order to do that, you need to make 0 pairs. So we have to add a negative 3 to both sides. So I'm going to do that. When I do that, these get crossed out because they're 0 pairs. And we don't have any 0 pairs on this side. We are left with x equals a negative 4. Why do you have to add zero pairs before subtracting, do you think? Well, we again, we have to get our variable alone. We need 
our variable alone. Where do you put the unit blocks when you add the zero pairs to the mat? You would be putting them in the negative section usually because you're using subtraction. So in the negative section. Model and solve the equation y plus 1 equals 5. Explain why you do not need to add zero pairs before you subtract. Let's look at this. y plus 1 equals 5. Let's set up our blocks here. Okay, so we have okay. we have y this is our y plus 1, okay, that's y plus 1 equals 5. In this case everything is positive right now. In order to get y alone, we need to add a negative 1 to both sides and that will cross these out and we are left with y equals 4. Okay. In this case it says why do you not need to add zero pairs before you subtract? Well you really did add a, make a zero pair but you added a negative number. Okay. You could have also done this one mentally quite honestly. Okay, let's go ahead and do some practice. I would like you to use your sentence mat and your blocks to complete 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 14. Please take pictures of each of your um, mats with the blocks on them and your solution and place them in here when you've finished. I hope that this helps you and you can always ask to use the algebra blocks while you are working on this unit. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask either myself or Mrs. Bino. Bye for now.